drop a beat. This is how. This is how. This, this is, is how, how it starts. starts. Y'all didn't know I have a DJ <laughs> name on the weekend. We drop a different beat. <laughs> All right, it is time for the Funcast Blast. Funcast Blast. Ooh, Funcast Blast. Funcast Blast. Funcast Blast. Funcast Blast. Thank you. Thank you. Today we won't chew into the mics this time. Is that a better one? <laughs> that was awesome. Whoop, 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 whoop. What's up, fanatics? Welcome to episode 122 of the Funko Funcast, the only official Funko podcast recorded at Funko HQ in Everett, Washington. Uh, we are doing another Getting to Know episode this week. You had Andrew Perlmutter on last week. Uh, this time we go outside of Funko, but to a familiar face, someone you've probably already seen many, many times before and are a fan of already, and that is... H.T. Nerdette. H.T. Nerdette. I love it. Before coming to Funko, I used to watch the the videos, the unboxings that you would do, and I heard that so many times. I'm like, I feel like I know her. <laughs> like She just got that, you know, that personality, that you, somebody I can hang out with. So we're going to hang out today. Yeah, and we've hung out before. We have a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, last saw you at, uh, what, Fun Days? Fun Days. Afterwards? And uh, LA Comic Con. You came to one of my meetups. That's right. Mm-hmm. We had fun with that. We did some spinning of the wheel at the booth there. It was a good time. <laughs> we've given away some protos together. Mm-hmm, we yeah. have. All right, so Getting to Know uh, is an episode for fans, just a chance to get to know you a little bit, what you do, how you came to Hot Topic, what you're interested in. Of course, our our motto now is everyone's a fan of something. We're going to find out what you're a fan of today. But let's start with the basics. Uh, Again, we know you're HT Nerdette, but what do you do for Hot Topic? So I am the toys and collectible buyer at Hot Topic. Um, And then I also do my HT Nerdette stuff. so. (laughs) So does that mean you're responsible for all the fun Funko goodies and other goodies from other companies that come to Hot Topic? I most certainly am. Yeah. yeah. So if it's a, if it's a figure or anything like that, that's all me. So <laughs> what uh, what kind of like you get to decide down to the character level what comes into Hot Topic? Sometimes, I mean, we have a great partnership with a lot of our vendors that we work with. So uh, it's really an awesome job. We're creative on everything. So yeah, sometimes most that's of the time. <laughs> That's fun. Do you have one one particular item? It doesn't have to be Funko that you're really excited that you got to bring into Hot Topic. It's actually it's Funko. So Sweet. like, I have two like exclusives that we did that are like my top. Like the, like they sit behind my desk still to this day, and I usually like rotate out my collectibles behind my desk like weekly, monthly, uh-huh. you know. Um, and it's the It movie moment Ooh. where he's in the gutter and little poor Georgie's like looking down at him, and then Thanos on his throne. Like those oh, two. Fun. Oh, pride and joy. Like <laughs> and those both went fast. Oh, they were yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got the movie moment. I never was able to get Thanos. So I'm gonna have oh. to get that one one day for my collection. I, I like that one a lot too. <laughs> so going back further, before coming to Hot Topic, what led you to that to get that job? What what were, did you used to do? Where did you go to school? That kind of stuff. Yeah, so uh, I was working at Barnes and Noble. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, and going to college and uh, I went to school for aquatic biology and I was like this little emo kid, you know, listening to, to pop punk bands, wearing band tees and skinny jeans, not much different than I am today. <laughs> um, and I was like, you know what? Hot Topic is, it feels like, you know, a home to me. So I went and applied. Uh, I was a seasonal sales associate and I worked my way up. I became a part time. And then I moved across the state, and because I'm from Michigan, so okay. like I grew up on like the border of Canada, so like that was a big move. It was only like 300 miles, you know. And then I got my own store. I actually left. I actually left Hot Topic for a bit. Yeah. Um, I went to sell jewelry. I sold jewelry for a, for a while, and I was like, you know what? They Hot Topic asked me to come back, and I was like, you know, Hot Topic's my home. Like that's it's my heart and soul. Like like I love working for Hot Topic, and I came back, ran my own store. And I would, then I was like, you know, I really need to focus on my degree. So I'm going to, you know, go back to school, get a degree, and, like, finish de- my degree in aquatic biology and, like, maybe get a master's, you know, that kind of thing. And then my manager was like, hey, you ever think about, like, going to HQ? And I was like, I had, yeah, my whole, when I started at Hot Topic, I was like, I'm going to work in California someday. Like, that was my goal was just to go to HQ. I had no idea what a buyer was. I had no idea anything about it. And I had some interviews, and they hired me. So, and it was because I was a nerd. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I got the job because I loved Doctor Who. I still love Doctor nice. Who, but like Doctor Who got me my job. So, thank you, David Tennant, for being my doctor. Like, <laughs> I'm with you there. That's my doctor too. Is he? Yeah, uh, oh yeah. The, well, duh. He's the best doctor. Oh, he's okay. so good. <laughs> used to debate him and Matt Smith quite a bit, but after watching the episodes multiple times, Tennant. Yeah, yeah. Tennant's the for best. For real. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so you started literally ground level. Oh, like entry level position, like teenager, you know, like. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I loved it. I love to hear those stories. And and was it a scary move to go across the country to move to California? Oh my gosh, I yeah. I don't know anyone in California. Well, I do now, but like yeah. when I moved, I didn't know anyone in California, and it was just one of those. I think I had like not hardly any money. Like slept on someone's floor when I moved out here because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, <laughs> or if you'd stay. Or, yeah, because yeah. like a lot of people that come out to California don't stay in California. Right. So. It was just one of those, like, okay. And then I was an assistant buyer, and I was, like, you know, doing, like, clerical work. You know, your data entry, that kind of thing, kind of getting a, a feel for it. And then worked my up. I'm never going back. Like, I love I love my home state. I love traveling. But, like, it's so nice in California. <laughs> is is that home now? Do you call that home? It's home. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, home. I felt the same way. Moving for, I moved from Texas up here for this job, and it was I didn't know anybody other than one person that worked here, maybe two. So it was a little scary, but now I, I consider this home. It just takes a while. Yeah. So I talked about at the beginning, uh, one of our themes is everyone's a fan of something. We already mm-hmm. touched on Doctor Who. Love that fandom. Uh, what other things are you into? What are your other fandoms? Sully, I have so many. Yep. Like We could be here for literally hours talking about this. Um, my number one is Final Fantasy. Like oh. I love Final Fantasy. Um I think I've played pretty much all of them. I haven't played the earlier on and the tactics. Like, I'm not very, I'm not very good at those ones. Uh-huh. But uh, so, Final Fantasy. I love horror stuff. Sam from Trick or Treats, my favorite character. F- Edgar Allan Poe, Shakespeare. I love reading. I love, I love all. I love the arts. You know, I love all of that stuff. Other fandoms, everything. <laughs> it's interesting. Oh. Most people will mention Marvel or DC pretty early on. Are either of those on your radar? Oh, I'm definitely more of a Marvel. I love yeah. X Men. X Men's oh, nice. my jam. Like, if I had to pick, I want to be Rogue. Like, Rogue is like the best X Men in my opinion. Like, she can have any power. I mean, yeah, it, you know, hurts other people, but like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's a little concern there, but it would still be cool. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> so I love everything. You mentioned a couple characters there. Mm-hmm. We we talked Phantoms, but uh, outside of Rogue and Tenant, the Tenth Doctor, what are some of your other individual favorite characters? I mean, I can keep going with the licenses. I like. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, other favorite characters? Oh, man. Okay. A, a favorite I like icon character is like Popeye. Popeye the Sailor Man is like one of my favorites. So I love Popeye. I love um, – I used to, I started my collection off. Like when I started collecting yeah. was actually Coca-Cola. So I had a bunch of Coca-Cola bottles. So I love the Coca-Cola bear. Um, I mean, I guess I could just look at my tattoos. <laughs> no doubt, right? <laughs> You definitely like the horror. I see the skull. Oh, yeah. That's Edgar Allan Poe. I yep. have two Edgar Allan Poe so The tattoos. Raven. Yep. Like new shows. I love Good Omens. I mean, obviously because oh, of David Tennant. But so good. <laughs> uh, the Boys was great. Yep. I hate that I like Homelander. Don't tell anyone. Don't. <laughs> I mean, okay, well, now they all know, but... <laughs> I mean, he was one of those characters that you, you, you had to like him for a while, and then you see that other side, but then you see why. Mm-hmm. And so you can kind of relate to it a little bit. And he, well, he's kind of, he's weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what else? Um, oh, I just started watching Barry. Barry's oh, awesome. so good. Like, I just finished it, actually. I just finished that one. There's so much. I love anime, too. I haven't even mentioned any of that. I love anime. All Might's my favorite from My Hero Academia. So he's great. Yeah, you your, your nerd resume is strong. It definitely, it, it's just like walking through a Hot Topic store. I can see all <laughs> the things that are in there. It's perfect. Yeah, we could walk the walls. I can be like, oh yeah, I love this one. This is yeah. great. You know, Demon Slayer is awesome. <laughs> I love, it makes it a lot easier. Like we have to do the unboxings here, the same when you do it on your, mm-hmm. your lives and on the, on the YouTube channel. And to talk about things, you've got to know a little bit about it or else it comes across unauthentic very fast. People will call us out occasionally. I'll be like, I'm the first one to tell you, I know nothing about Persona 5. But I did the unboxing because they needed somebody to be in front of the camera that day. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's you're in the right place, clearly. Well, I think that's another reason how I got my job. Because, like, you would get products in the stores and you'd be like, I have no idea what this is. But in order to, like, to sell it you, and to connect with the people that right. come in, you had to research it. And you're like, okay, well, let's see what this is all about. And then I just... I don't remember if I was always this nerdy or if I just evolved and got nerdier as I went. Right. Like, because like I used to spend time in my basement playing Tomb Raider. Like that's what I did: nice. Tomb Raider and Final Fantasy. And like I would put the blanket over my TV so Dad wouldn't know I was still up, like playing video <laughs> games. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then it just evolved into like my job now. Like my job is literally watching TV shows and finding cool things and being like, "Hey, we should maybe do this." And then other people are like, "Cool, let's do it and let's make it happen." 
Do you feel like there are times where you have to kind of get out of your comfort zone and go try a fandom that maybe it didn't appeal to you at first, but then you got into it? Oh, anime. 100%. Yeah. I did not watch anime before I came to the office. Yeah, I need so. to. That's one of the things I keep telling Dude, myself. You're going to get hooked. Yeah. It's going to happen. You're going to be like, what have I been missing out on my entire life? Like, it's so it's so good. What's my gateway? Where do I start? My Hero Academia. I've heard that many times. Hands down. I even got to go to Funimation down in uh, yes. Dallas area, and I met a few of the voice actors. Turns out I knew somebody on their marketing team from when I used to do marketing back in Houston, and uh, that's exactly what they all told me, too, is My Hero Academia, so I got to do it. Yeah, that's your gateway, because you're going to be like, it's like Marvel, it's like superheroes, and X-Men, yeah. it's more like X-Men, they all got quirks, you know, and in anime and like each one's got its own character development that's the great thing about anime is they develop each character so deeply like you connect yeah. to them and you're like oh man can you believe that bakugo and deku are at it again they used to be buddies when they were kids like that kind of stuff so it's it's so good and that's what it's all about i've told people that for years when it comes to shows like one of my favorites is buffy the vampire slayer and i'll see there we go we're sharing another thing Oh my goodness, I'm nerding out so hard right now. <laughs> but I'll talk to people and they're surprised to hear that from me. And I'm like, it's about the characters. Joss Whedon is just a master at getting you emotionally attached to every single character in some way, shape, or form. He's so good. I love yeah. Buffy. Like, love Buffy. Yeah. I need a Buffy tattoo in my life. Like, oh. it needs to happen. I want the scythe. So <laughs> That would be amazing. But, okay. I still don't have one, so maybe that'll be my, one of my first ones yes. too. Yes. What yeah. team are you on? Because I'm Team Spike. I love Spike. Spike's my favorite. <sighs> That's tough. I, I think depending on which season I had just watched, it would probably change my opinion. I, I, I might be Team Angel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I love the spinoff series, and I love seeing what went on with that. I didn't get into the comics. Did you get into the comics after? I think I've done three seasons of the comics. Yeah. Uh, it got real weird with Buffy and Angel and mountains and stuff. Like, they reconnect. We'll just say that and okay. destroy the planet. No spoilers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I need I need to give that a run as well. I watched the animated comic that they did shortly after the final season. Oh. That was kind of fun. I didn't watch that actually. Oh, there you go. I gotta check that There's out. Something for you. I'll do the comics. You do the animated. Comic. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so we talked fandoms. We've talked you working in hot topic, being a buyer. I imagine you have quite a collection at home of different things. I have the most. Yes, I have quite the collection. Yeah. It's it all started with Coca Cola. And then when I was doing my aquatic biology, I started collecting skulls, like animal skulls. So I have a big collection of animal skulls. What else do I have? Oh, I don't know if I could say uh, Tokidoki. I do collect Tokidoki. Okay. Yeah, for sure. We (laughs) talk about everything. Okay, good. I like jewelry. I don't wear a lot of it. I do collect it, though. (laughs) Well, it comes from selling it. I'm sure you got a different perspective on it. So Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You learn a lot. So, like, you learn a lot about margins and stuff as a buyer and, like, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm very picky, but... (laughs) You have to be. Space becomes an issue real fast as a collector. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you've run into that. Yes. So, like, I've graduated. I have glass cases and I have shelves and it's just... And I have collectibles, like, collectibles at work, too. So I have them behind my desk. Um, I collect a lot. Oh, I love The Witcher. Look at this. I'm just all over the place. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, no, that's good. The Witcher's awesome. I can't wait for the Netflix show that's going to come out. Um, so I have got like, Witcher figurines. Geralt in the bathtub's my favorite. <laughs> that's a character from Witcher? So Geralt is the Witcher. He's the main uh, Witcher. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if you play video games, Sully, but The Witcher is the best game ever. I'm a bad video game player. Like, I really enjoy them, but I get one game and I'll play it forever. Like, I probably logged years of my life on Rocket League already. Oh, really? I can't stop playing the game. Now I'm, in, I'm playing Gears 5 and Borderlands 3. I love both those franchises. They're so fun. Yeah. Borderlands 3 is, like, all I do. That's all I do with my so life right good. now. It's so good. What do, what do you go with? I've, I've jumped around. I've started a few characters oh, in the really? game already. Yeah, I can't decide which one I want to play as. And I keep playing to a certain point, and then I'll see friends jump online. And for me, that's what gaming is all about, the experience with friends. So I'll go back and replay the same parts of the campaign over and over and over again. So I haven't really made it that far into the game because I keep doing that. But it's still fun. I, I really love those games. I love the crazy guns. Oh, yeah. Some of the stuff that drops the shields that have, like, zero power whatsoever, but then they have some sort of crazy, like, you know, attribute at the bottom. That's fun. Yeah, I just ran into Tiny Tina, so she's nice. all grown up now. Yeah. And I love that voice actress. Oh. I was blown away. I was like, I love Tiny Tina, and now she's grown up Tina, and it like blew my mind. Like, That's awesome. I think that's another cool thing about anime, but they're voice actors, so your characters are different. So probably like who you met, uh-huh. that voice from My Hero, it could have been like another dude that was on like six other animes that you'll watch, and you'll be like, I know that voice. Yep. So. Yeah, we did a couple interviews while we were there, and I was amazed to hear how many characters that they each did. Makes sense. I mean, if your full time job is voiceover, you don't want to just do one thing. Yeah, no, you got a good voice. Keep going. Like, yeah. that's so cool. 
I want to know how you break into that industry. I know, right? That'd like, be fun. Do you start with Audible? You're like, hey, I can read books, and like, oh, you got a good tone on your voice, so let's uh, let's have you do voice. I don't know. <laughs> I I would love that because then you can be you could be famous, but maybe no one really knows what you look like, so you can just go out in public and have a good time. Oh yeah. You don't get bothered. Which is crazy to think, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I know what a handful of those guys look like, even before going to Funimation, just seeing them at the shows when they do autographs and, and photos or whatever, but uh, not many. Not many of the voices. Well, yeah, I think what All Might is Vegeta or something like that. Like, like that. Yeah. those two can't voice. Yeah, it's the same guy. It's two, not, that's nuts. Two of the biggest characters in anime. So before getting Funko into the Hot Topic stores, were you already aware of the brand? Were you a fan of the brand? Were you collecting any of the Funko products? So don't judge me. The first time we got a Funko Pop in, I called them Pop Dolls. I did not know any better. It's okay. I didn't know. We had our very first exclusive, which was Blue Eyes Legolas uh, from the Lord of the Rings line. Then we got our White Power Ranger. Yeah. And I was like, oh, the Funko Pop Dolls. And then when I got hired at the office, they're like, they're not dolls, they're figures. And I was like, okay, you're totally right, but I had never known, like, I didn't know anything about Funko before. Right. It's like, um, we didn't, we weren't really a collectible store when at all, yeah. you know, until Funko really came in and like changed our entire pop culture awesomeness. So, like, I love it. I love it. I have the best job in the world. Like, <laughs> I was there for the evolution. Like, I started collecting when it was one little section, and then before long, it was a bigger section. Before long, it was the back wall. Then it might move to the side wall, just to throw us off a little bit, <laughs> maybe back to the back wall. But it's it's been fun to watch it evolve. I, I would always buy when it was the buy one, get one in the early days, and now save up the hot cash. Oh, yeah. So you make sure you, you stretch that as best you can to get all the figures you can. It's amazing. Yeah, it, and the, the pops themselves have come so far. Like, I remember, like, the little, like, you know, angry-armed, chubby guy. Like, yep. you know what I mean? And now they're like, I don't know, like, our Gandalf that we just did is amazing. Like, the action poses that they're able to do. And, like, you just feel like you're in the moment. And that's the coolest thing about these is, like, you can look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that part. It was so cool. Or you're like, oh, I love it because right after this, you know, in the books, he fights Balrog. Like, yeah. you know, we got all these, like, it's just really cool. Yeah, it does. It, because of the detail, you're right. It sets more of an individual moment in the film than just a character. There is, there's definitely been an evolution. And our artists, oh, I talk about it all the time. I just love walking on four and I'll slow down wherever I'm going and look at every screen in there because we often don't know what's getting worked on until it's done and ready. And I could see them in the early stages with like, they'll have pictures cut out or they'll have screenshots of things as they develop a character. And what they do may never get produced in that fashion. It may change drastically, but it's fun to see. Oh, they're so good because yeah. like my job, my job is literally just an idea. I'm like, hey, what if we do this? And then we'll get art back, and we're like, oh, my gosh. This is so cool. Like, the fact that these people are so talented that they can take an idea and just create this wonderful, like, piece of art that's going to turn into a piece of vinyl that's going to be in hundreds of people's homes and spark, like, this... Oh, it's just so cool. <laughs> so you, you hinted at it there, or I mean, you said it. Mm -hmm. You have a direct hand in not only the characters, but sometimes specifics about the characters. Is there one that you're really, really proud of for bringing to Hot Topic? Or several? If you, if you can't narrow it down to one, are there several? I think all of them. I think my... I think all of them all hold something to me because it, I, I take a lot of time to look at it and like read like comments and you know brainstorm with people around the office and even with the teams here. I'm like, what would you like to see? What would you? There's something we have in the works that I can't talk about yet, but Fair it's enough. gonna be really cool. Like it's gonna be great. I, everything. I love everything. And, and then, but I also take it really personal when it doesn't do very good. <laughs> it happens. It's not everybody can be a fan of everything. Right. And so sometimes when we get vested in it emotionally on a single character, we think it's the coolest thing in the world. You know, it just doesn't strike with everybody. Yeah. I think that's the hardest part of my job is being yeah. like, this is going to be so good. It's so cool. Everyone's going to love it. And then they're like, it's okay. And I'm like, oh, but I work so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. It may come around. I was at SDCC two or it might have been three years ago now. And we had the Steve holding the bat yes. from Stranger Things. And it sat on the shelf. No one was really into it because Steve was viewed as a different character in season one. And then season two, he went through the shift, and, and everybody's like, I've got to have that pop now. <laughs> well, you passed up on it before. Now it's going to cost you. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Hot Topic didn't. That was a Hot Topic shirt exclusive. <laughs> there you go. So did it sit on the shelves for a while? I can't remember. Probably. Yeah. It probably. I can't remember either. It was a while ago. People regret that now. I, they do. Yeah. But that's part of being a collector, too. We all have our stories of the thing we passed up on that we shouldn't have. Oh, that, yeah. So many things. You got one of those you're still hunting down? There's a lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. Like, 
I, I when I first started and I went to fun days, I was like, oh, you know, cool, Freddie Funko. Hey, you like pops? Would you like this pop? And I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? It was a Doc Brown one. It was so cool. And I just didn't understand what I had until I gave it away, you know? Oh. It's like love. You let it go, and if it comes back, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that one's still not coming back. <laughs> no, it's never coming back. And now it's like so much money. <laughs> well, you either do it that way, or you do like I do and turn into a full fledged hoarder, which is not the route you need to go down. I will promise you that. My house is just to the brim at this is point. It? I don't know how to let go of anything. I just keep adding to the collection. I have to sneak things home. The wife will be like, "What is that bag? Don't worry about it. It's fine. As long as it goes in your area with your stuff, it's fine." <laughs> I uh, so we we talked about fandoms, what you're a fan of, your characters, anything particular that you're working on now that you're really excited about. I'm really excited about everything I'm working on. I'll be completely honest. Like, it, it, we've got some crazy things coming up, and it's going to be really good. There's a lot of winking going on right now. So <laughs> uh, clearly, you can't tell me what it is. I get it. I get it. I understand it. But it's it's good. You're passionate about your job, and it comes through. Honestly, watching those videos, even before, like I said, before coming on board at Funko, I was like, she gets what she does. I, I and I love it. It comes through. That passion definitely comes through for fans. Yeah, like I didn't even know what my job was when I got the job. Like I had no idea. And then uh, I actually was really missing my connection with people. Um, Like the people in the office are great working with all my vendors are awesome. But like when you're in Hot Topic, you change people's lives. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the people that come in, like a lot of us were misfits growing up. So we can kind of relate to the other people that are struggling with whatever they're struggling with. And being able to be HT Nerdette and connecting with all of all of everyone, like has really made me love my job even more. So I know the name seems straightforward, H.T. Nerdette, but is there an origin story to how you came up with that? I'm actually 2.0. So oh. um, there's another girl, Kelsey. Kelsey was my boss, uh-huh. and she was the original H.T. Nerdette. So it was just an email blast that we sent to stores of like, hey, here's the up-and-coming product. Like Just, just kind of like keeping people in the know. Yeah. And then I honestly don't know how we started doing unboxing videos. I think it started with the blind mystery pop. So I think it was the very first oh, one. The, uh, the Deadpool. Yeah. Is that the one? That yeah. was the very first video unboxing I ever did. Really? Yeah. I remember chasing those down. Oh, they were good. Yeah, those were fun. They were so good. So HT Nerdette is a, is a title like The Doctor. It is. So there might one day, I don't want you to leave. This is <laughs> way down the road, but there might be another HT Nerdette one. There day. might be. Oh, that's fun. I like that. Yeah. All right, so I asked you, the, I'll call them the standard questions. I don't think I've actually referred to them that way before. But then we've got what I call the bonus questions. Uh, there's some wacky off-the-wall questions that we've been getting since day one when we started the fun casts. Shoot, going almost three years ago now. I can't believe that. Uh, they come at us all the time. So I ask everyone that comes on as like a, let's just, just set the tone here, right? Often debated, does pineapple belong on pizza? Absolutely not. Yes. <laughs> I knew Nothing. I liked you. We're getting a lot of left and right shakes in the room. Yeah. <laughs> the audience does not like pineapple on pizza. I love it. Have you tried it? I have. With okay. like the ham and everything. Yeah. Not my jam. I'm I, like standard pizza. I like pepperoni, cheese, and mushrooms. Oh, can't agree with that one. Oh, sorry. That need, I need to continue the question from now on, though, and ask what the go-to pizza is. Is that that's your go-to? That's my go-to. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Do you have a go-to pizza place? Oh, uh, yeah. Pizza Hut. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm a Papa John's. Oh, but Papa John's for yeah. that garlic dipping sauce, oh. that's where it's at. Like That stuff's dangerous. It is. They could sell that in stores. I wonder if I they should. I would buy vats of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Costco. Yeah. Costco. They should carry Papa to Costco. John's pizza dipping sauce. <laughs> We talk a lot of food, so the next question, also Great. equally important, what's the best burger you've ever had? Uh, it's a place called Stella's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It was actually voted like the best burger of the year when I lived there, so it was like 10 years ago. Um, but it is the best. It's those big, thick, juicy ones that are like packed full of stuff on the inside. Yeah. Like, oh, so good. So good. We had to do this right before lunch, didn't we? <laughs> is there a favorite fast food burger chain that you have? Oh, I love McDonald's. Really? It was my very first job. And like, I know I, I've worked there for four years because I started like at 14, you know, and I love it to this day, even like after working there for so long. And like, it's my guilty pleasure for sure. My first job was Sonic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I worked with a guy who had managed McDonald's for years. So I heard all those <laughs> stories, even though I wasn't there. Okay, this one, again, I asked this to Andrew last week, and he was in a unique position. You as well in a unique position because you have a direct impact on this. If there is one character one funko pop from any license any character no restrictions that you could see made what would it be i'd have to go obviously final fantasy it's a toss-up between red 13 
because he's awesome. But I'm probably going to have to go with Squall. Squall's like my favorite character from Final Fantasy VIII. Like, I, I love him. He's my favorite. That's what I would do. And that'd be standard pop format, six inch, ten inch, standard. So standard. Uh, my one of my gold, like one of my like pops I wanted made actually got made, which was uh, Papa Emeritus the second from Ghost. Uh-huh. So it's really actually there's been a lot where I'm like, this is a personal buy. I hope everyone else likes it too. <laughs> I mean, that's what this company was founded on. You ask Brian about some of the ones that were made over the years, and he'll tell you right up that I wanted it made because I was into it. And now those are some of the most sought after characters that we've ever made because no one else is touching that stuff. Yeah. The fact that we've done Golden Girls. I mean, no one was no one was touching Golden Girls before we made the pop figures. Oh, the, wait, the action figures at NYCC, then the pops, then the Dorbs, the skateboard deck that we talked about with Andrew last week, and and we're we're loving it, and fans are loving it, so we keep with it. And there's the Funkoverse too, right? There's a Golden Girls Funkoverse there game. There is. I don't yes. Know if it's no, we know that, right? Oh, it's oh, out. Okay, yeah, good. It's out <laughs> you have to do the same thing I do. It's like I've seen that. Can I talk about it? <laughs> I'm very careful. We have our own internal systems, and other people will dive in and start searching for characters they like, and I'm like, nope, I don't want to know because I'll accidentally say something in the wrong setting, so just avoid it. That's the thing with Nerdette. I think people watch just so I leak stuff on accident. They're like, oh, she said it, and I was like, oh, man. (laughs) And then immediately their tweets, confirmed. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we we go through that a little bit. (laughs) All right, so we're going to do a giveaway in this episode. I haven't decided what the item will be, but I might just have an exclusive HT Nerdette pop downstairs. Maybe I get you to autograph it before you leave. Totally. Would you do that? I will definitely do that. So we'll pick somebody on Twitter. We ask everybody each week to share the fun cast, share why people should listen. So maybe a nice something about you that they could put on on Twitter uh, and tell people with a link where to go listen and, and you know this is coming, they have to include an emoji so that we made sure they actually listened what emoji would you want them to include? The emoji I would include would be like the mind blown one. Because every time I get something new, that's me. And anytime time Funko announces anything new, it's that. It's like, whoa. So, yeah, mind blown. <laughs> I'm the same way. I, I know people don't believe it when we see stuff at the office for the first time. I, I usually let out some colorful metaphors that I don't put on uh, on the Funcast or on video. But that's I'm like, what? We did that? <laughs> like, that's so cool. How did that even happen? Yeah. All right, guys, so go out there, tweet, share it. Uh, Share that emoji that she just said. I'm not going to repeat it. You had to earn that one. You had to listen. Uh, And then you can also jump in the conversation on SoundCloud. Leave a comment below for a chance to win a social media Freddy Funko Pop. Do you have one of those? No. Can I get one? Yeah, you're getting one. Great. Thank you. Yeah, guests. Guests earn that for sure. Yes. Uh, And a Funko Funcast t-shirt. Hooray. I I might have one of those for you, too. All right, uh, I, th- I think we're coming up on the end of our time. That went fast, didn't it? Are we? Yeah. I was worried it was going to go short. That was great. No, I thought that was fun. That was, was awesome. Good stuff. I-, I know people are going to enjoy it. Uh, where can they follow and interact with you and Hot Topic? What are the channels that you that you want them to go to? So I'm on Twitter, so mm-hmm. it's just HC Nerdette on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, I also uh, on YouTube. We do a monthly video. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it features all of our exclusive product. We also do uh, on Instagram. There's a little like swipe up every beginning of the month. And, oh, obviously Periscope. That's where you can watch me. That's through Twitter. So you can just go to Hot Topic Twitter and then click the little link. It'll take you live every Wednesday at 5. So, well, mostly every Wednesdays at 5. I have to miss it every week. That's when I'm driving home at that same time. You can rewatch it. I need to go back and watch it, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, people always tell us, I missed the live. Well, it's it's there. Even though it's called a live, it's recorded for for days, weeks, now forever on Periscope, right? Yeah, it used to be like, what, two weeks? Uh Uh-huh. And they'd be like, oh, no. Because I try not to wear the same clothes. (laughs) And I used to go back and be like, okay, what am I wearing now? (laughs) You can refer to it that morning when you get up to make sure. Yeah. I have to do that too. Although I failed many, many times. (laughs) All right. So at the end of each of our episodes, uh, when we have the whole crew on, we each have our own sign off that we do. Mine is Nerds Unite. It's important to me because I think we should all come together and be positive towards one another, work together. And you have one and yours is? Stay nerdy. Stay, it's beautiful. It's kind of the same uh, same idea we got going here. That's why we're buddies. So we do this really weird thing. I still don't know the origin of it, but when we sign off, we all sign off and say our saying at the exact same time. I know there's only two of us, but we're still going to do it. So I'll dial down three, two, one, and then we'll say it. Ready? Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. Stay nerdy. nerdy. Perfect. <laughs>